project for this afternoon now is to do the cutouts for bulkhead six, which is gonna be the one that it's the entrance into where the owners and the guest queen bed is on either side, but most importantly, it's on the bridge deck. It's where you go in from the cockpit area, so outside into the inside area. What it is, it's, it's two individual pieces, one for each side, and they are the only pieces that are full height. So they actually go up to the whole top of the cabin top here. This is the opening to the berth, and then a window detail. The other side of this is gel coated. That's why it has plastic wrap around it. So everything's gonna be nice and square, but our reference point is that straight edge there. So I'm gonna lay that out right now. After eight years of the nomadic life, involving crossing oceans in a 34-foot saber, refitting an aluminum boat, and then taking that to the Arctic Circle, we're back at it again with a brand new build. This is Matt and I'm Jessica. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and join us every week as we start our newest project of building a 42-foot catamaran from the ground up. So we're using this side um, as our reference point. This is one area that we do know is going to be perfectly vertical. It's the doorway that's leading into the salon from the cockpit. Um, we can use that as our reference to give us our first area for where our berth is. It's gonna be the queen size bed on the port and starboard side. And that's what we're gonna end up cutting out and drawing in today. So you can see like the big gap there, but you can definitely start to make out areas. This door leads into our head. The second door leads into our shower. So here's the, the salon that's actually kind of making, coming into shape right now. Um, it's an L-shaped settee, so an L-shaped couch. And sitting, I'd be sitting on it right about here, right by here, here and all the way up to about oh, about here I think is, is the shape of that. Right here is a nav desk facing forward. There's another kind of like storage area right here. This leads down into the halls out this area. Um, galley counter is linear so it runs just four and a half on this side and that is seven feet uh, long so pushes it roughly out to about here. And then this is galley area. There's another countertop that's five feet long over on this side that breaks up in between one area to lead down into the hall back here. And then another one forward here that leads down into the hall in this area. Just an amazing amount of space. And now for once we can kind of start getting a feel for how that's going to be laid out. Uh, but we will need to do some trimming because right now, actually on both of our sides, we're getting the issue where it's a little wide. Of course, easier to take a little off than to add some on. So right on the whole sides, Matt's going to have to go and trim to make it fit. And then it should start like falling down into place a little bit more. But yeah. that's, I think, all that today is going to be about is just making all of those minute adjustments and getting this in its proper place. One of the reasons Matt was trimming out the bulkhead was to keep it from pressing out on the hull sides. We want to go for just a little gap between the bulkhead and the hull, about three millimeters, 
To verify the bulkhead does not press out and create a hard spot. If we did not do this, while looking out on the hull, there would be a small wave pressing out from each bulkhead position, deforming the hull shape because of these hard spots. With a few small adjustments, we can get the bulkhead to float in place, with small spacers added behind it, until it is time for us to bond it into place by coving and glassing. History is being made on the Cataran, and we're putting in our first bulkhead that spans across both sides. So, Matt has his tools. We're going to get it leveled out, um, get some cleats in to hold the forward spot in place, and then I guess spend the rest of the day glassing on both sides. Still, so interesting seeing this broken into parts. Our boat has sections. Oh. That on there. The other one on the other end so it doesn't continue to do this dance. Yeah. And then we'll actually level it. the areas of the cavern we have to like squeeze ourselves into the little places but <laughs> I don't think it's gonna end basically until we splash now yeah it's pretty much all little spaces from, uh, from here on up close we're getting close to that point all right so as you can see I have gone through and I've put little black lines where the forward edge of the bulkhead is supposed to be right around and that's the center of this group of unidirectional and we've got cleats holding the bulkhead in place right now so of course Matt is just kind of getting it sturdy we will level out the top here and once we're ready to glass the plan is we will go and do the inside street seam get that all strengthened up so that when that has cured we can take off the little cleats and glass all along here I was originally thinking that I'm going to be climbing in this area and trying to glass from there, but that looks pretty painful. It looks like you're going to get your foot in there, so I'm guessing yeah. you're going to like lean over. I think it's going to be a lean and glass situation, so I'll put a little padding down here, and uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's going to be a long afternoon doing that one, but that's that's fine. Part of the process. Going through real time, I know a lot of you kind of wonder how far behind the videos are. Today is June 1st, woohoo, kind of starting summer. Took the day off yesterday to celebrate Memorial Day with friends on the bay, which was great. But now that we are getting into summer, the days are gonna get hotter. So I think we're gonna start working the night shifts and starting in the afternoon, maybe some early mornings, but there's gonna be a lot of late nights for us. Plus, now that the second container is on order, we expect that to be here in about a month, and so we want to try and get as much of this done as we can. Um, we spent a lot of May with me doing editing and just kind of like planning, but June is going to be the month to keep our heads down and work. So we're going to be spending lots of hours in here, lots of late nights in here, and hopefully soon all of these bulkheads will be in. We're going to get the webbing in, and then when container two comes, it's going to start looking like a real catamaran. So it's pretty close as it is right now, mm -hmm. but you're just going to have to push it and pull it to the final. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, what is that? We need to um, half a Is that good now? That's good. That is very level. Okay, cool. So we got that. That is looking pretty level. Just pretty level? It's looking gorgeously level. Yeah, it needs to be perfect. 
Would perfectly like level. Would you like to see it? I would. Okay. Damn, that's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just making sure everything is plumb right now and then if it needs to be adjusted we can change that by our clamps here. Booyah! Booyah! We have gotten bulkhead four all leveled out now, so it's plumb um, both from port to starboard. We've put a few cleats in to like make little tweaks and again keep it in place until we can at least get the forward edge coved and glassed and uh, cured to harden it all up. So the last thing that we're doing right now is creating little shim pieces of shaved foam when Matt did the trimming. Of course, you're not gonna have always perfect lines, so there's little gaps here and there, and we're just gonna go in and fill those with kind of like foam shavings, and we'll get coved in and make sure there's no gaps or spaces at all. Okay, so that'll work there, so we shave that. Right now, Matt is prepping the area, the forward seam, with some styrene to get it ready for the uh, resin. So I'm going to go through right now and make two batches of thickened resin using mostly silica. Um, and I'm not going to add the peroxide yet, so that will hold off on um, kind of starting the timer of when we need to apply it because it will start curing. So I'm just going to make or do two batches of 16 ounces. I'll measure out the 16 ounces of resin in here, pour it into a paper cup, and then I can add the thickener to it. And once we're ready to apply, I'll probably add 2% peroxide because this we do want to start curing faster. Um, yeah, it's kind of cool that you don't need to add the peroxide until like the last second and it will still stay 16 ounces even with the thickener in there. I have now got the first container of 16 ounces thickened up so I am ready to add the peroxide, hand it over to Matt who's going to cove it in. And as I said, uh, with the warmer temperatures, if we needed a longer working time, we'd probably go with about one and a half percent. But because we do want this to kick faster and it doesn't take Matt very long to apply, I'm gonna add the full 2%, which means within like 30 or 40 minutes it should start curing. And you can see the consistency I've mixed it to it's thick enough that it's not going to fall off of this very easy, but you can still move it around well, which is what we look for in these cases. I can potentially go a little bit thicker, but it's like really easy to over thicken at this point, so we're just going to go where it is. In other instances of applying the thickened resin to get the cove at corners of our bulkheads, we have tried a few times using the uh, pastry bags, cutting a hole out and just kind of squirting it in there. But with this, Matt kind of found after doing both that it's just as easy to kind of uh, spread it on there because he has one of his uh, squeegees cut down to size. And we spend a lot of time trying to fill the pastry bag once the uh, peroxide is mixed in. So it's really just easier overall to take it right out of the tub, kind of apply extra thick, and then use the squeegee just to um, get it to the right shape that we need for the cove. Well, that was fun. 
Uh, it turns out as soon as Matt started applying the thickened vinyl ester there and coving it, um, I jumped in to lend a hand and I wasn't quite prepared with gloves, so I never had a chance to get the camera out because I was just covered in icky, gooey, goopiness. The first side that we worked on over here looks like it's starting to cure, is it? Starting to. Starting to, so, yeah. so yep, quick, prepare ourselves now for the next side and get started in just a few moments. I got my box of gloves ready. Alrighty, this is looking like it's going to be easier. Once Matt had gone through with his precisely cut squeegee to give us the desired size cove, I went behind him with a flat squeegee to clean up the excess resin which had overflowed. With a bit of that leftover resin, we used it to cover the exposed parts of our unidirectional fiberglass and fill in any minute gaps which may be there. All right, stage one is successfully completed and because we're getting into evening now, again, we're having that where the temperature is starting to go down and we're not in quite the rush we were before because it's not taking quite as long. Plus, we also reduced the amount of peroxide to give ourselves more work time. You can see we have a nice cove going there along the seam and Matt has also gone through and kind of like filled little screw holes from the cleats that were holding us in place and also just generally covered the unidirectional to um, smooth out any porous spots in there. To bond the bottom of bulkhead 4 to our bridge deck, we were using sheets of our 4545 double bias fiberglass with a bottom layer and a width of 250 millimeters. On the chamfered panel, it was easier for us to do separate pieces of fiberglass rather than try to get a single piece to follow the corner. On the porthole, this bulkhead only acts as a support over the guest bunk so it does not reach all the way down into the hull. You can see though, through the fairing compound we've applied, that it has already been reinforced on both sides with three extra layers of fiberglass in a combination of 090 and 4545 double biased. For more information on that video, make sure to watch episode 185 linked in the description box below. On top of our 250 millimeter fiberglass, we added another layer that was 200 millimeters wide. By not having them the same width, this helps to create a transition in the added strength here and not leave hard spots where an extremely rigid area could be sitting next to a spot with no extra support at all.
we are getting close to finishing the aft side here and it's going much, much smoother than the forward edge. I think part of it is just accessibility, you know, like you're not trying to lean over something and get the best angle to work at it. But um, preparation is key as well because on that first side, we totally forgot that we needed peel ply in a few areas. So I'm down there trying to cut that. Matt's up here, we're running out of resin. And so this time we just made sure that we were fully prepared for everything before we started and it's going much better. Uh, as you can see, I've got a couple peel plies cut to size over there already. Matt's getting some resin on the second layer of fiberglass. And I think it's been rolling on pretty well. Oh yeah, perfect. It's getting a little cooler, getting a little bit longer of work time. Matt's just more comfortable in general. Okay. And <laughs> yeah. One of the questions now is this four ounces of resin going to last us? Yep. Okay, good. You've got some in your tray still? Mm, very little, but <laughs> we'll make it work. We will make it work. I was deep, deep down on the bottom of a well. Seagrass was all I found. I know turn it in hell no more. Cookies in this jar. Did I take it too far? Now I dwell in the sand like a fish on land. But I'm deep, deep down on the bottom of a well. I don't belong, can't you tell? This place must be hell no more. Cookies in this jar. Did I take it too far? Now I dwell in the sand like a fish on land. Oh, it is the end of the workday and we have just finished cleaning up in time for a late dinner tonight at 8 o'clock. We did get bulkhead 4 in and it's, now that it's in place, it feels so incredible. Again, it was one of those things that we started working on a few weeks into the build. Kind of did the little odd jobs on it of cutting out the doors, putting the unidirectional in, um, reinforcing some areas of fiberglass. But other than that, it has just been sitting in that hull for weeks and weeks and we've been walking around it. So now to have it in place and start to see how it's going to section out the boat is, ha, ah, feels so good. Um, but bulkhead five, the larger one that you see directly behind me, tomorrow Matt is going to do some more trimming of that. So hopefully the following day we can get that installed. We're like moving right along here. It's a pretty good feeling. <laughs> Such a good girl, Georgia Cat. everyone it is once again my favorite time of week where we are still adding new patrons to our walls inside the catamaran i'm in between bulkheads two and three right now which is going to be storage lockers and so with our patrons we have put their names on here permanently this is never going to get covered painted over we're just going to gloss over this so that we always are reminded of the people who got us where we are and this week I've added the patron names of the people who joined us once we actually got out of lockdown last summer in England and all the way up to getting here to Annapolis in the fall and kind of announcing that we found our build site, which is really exciting. So I just wanted to give a couple of shout outs to some really important people that went on the wall today. Look how much it's growing. Right here we have our friend Alistair. Alistair is actually a dock buddy of ours at Sutton Harbor Marina uh, through lockdown and made sure that we had a key to the facility so that we could still take hot showers through the winter and even took us out to the moors in the summer uh, just before we headed out. So awesome guy and we totally miss him a lot. And for a few people that you may recognize now, Summer and that guy sailing or Brian as he's also known, but they have been here multiple times to help us with the build so far. They were here to unload the first container. They've helped bonded the um, inner hull pieces. So what I'm leaning against right here and they're going to be back to bond the hull sides with us. So they've been a huge help and we really appreciate them coming out when they do. 
And also on the topic of builds, we've got John Hussey. I think that's how you say your name, John. We've never actually gone over that before. But him and his son Jake have actually kind of done the same thing where they were out here to unload the first container and then they came back to actually bond the bridge deck to the hull. So they're always willing to lend a hand. We really appreciate that. I'm sure we've not seen the last of them out here either. So again, so many great people on this wall. We could not be doing this build without the support of our patrons. We absolutely appreciate everything they do for us, the community that we have there. So if you are interested in becoming a patron and getting your name on these walls as well, just check the link in the description box below and hopefully you'll be going on the whole side over here. Japan